Hey, Mark. Hey, Jeremy. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Just you and me? Debbie. So far. Oh, that's got to be Dennis. Then Janet. Hmm. Hi, guys. Hey, Janet. How you doing? Good. Yeah. Hey, Dennis. You got a bunch of hardy golfers out there in December, let me tell you. That's, you know, it's not that bad, actually. It's kind of nice. Are you still open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dennis. What are you doing? Get out there. Uh, 60, 60 degrees is my limit. <laughs> 30 is mine. 30? Yeah. You'll... Well, 30 has to be above freezing. I know. So you've been playing? Yeah. In the last week? Yep. yep. Wow. Hats off to you. Well, you've got the hat on, so. Yeah, uh, that's right. I'm cold. <laughs> I'm inside. No, it's, it's been really nice, Dad. It's been great to play this time of year. Well, it's sunny. Yeah, when it's sunny, it's really sunny and not windy, then <laughs> it, it could be okay. Yeah, I played in the wind too. It was a, it was fun, a challenge. Uh, oh, there's Tom. Perfect. So, uh, Kelsey is not going to be joining us today, and Brad Davis is not joining us tonight. Ah, uh, there goes item one. <laughs> so yeah. who, so who dropped off? Was it Todd? Todd did, and then there was a gentleman. Oh, geez, I forget his name actually. Uh, he came he to one him. meeting. Yeah. Yep, one meeting, and then he yeah. he took off. So okay, okay. we scared so, him. So this committee has how many? Seven. Is our uh, so, is Brad on? No, he's not, not joining not. tonight. Hmm. Okay. In, in fairness, he didn't get so he got appointed a couple days ago, and and he, you know, it was a last minute situation for him. So, do we know him? No, I, I honestly don't know him. He said it. He played, I think, twice this year, um, a few times last year. I, I, that's all. That's all I know. Okay. Well, I can I can I can vouch for Brad, Tom. Uh, I know Brad. He's in our neighborhood. He's a, he's. A great guy and a neighbor. So, uh, so he's a police to... officer for the UW, Carl, yep. or yep. Uh, Jeremy. Yep. yep. Hmm. And I think he'll he'll be a great addition to the team. He's also a very good golfer. So that's important because that's your number one rule to be on this committee, don't you? Know? <laughs> oh, geez, I should. That's why you're on it, right, Janet? Yeah. That's why they okay. keep waiting to kick me off so that the average year can go up. <laughs> Janet, right. if that's the case, there's a lot of us who don't belong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my definition would even work for Mark if he had an old bag of clubs in his car. That's all it would take. You own sticks, you play. Yeah. You I want to be ask. like Terry Turner and golf my age. There you go. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's a noble uh, goal, but uh, most of us won't make that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm but if the, the older you get, the better... Well, Health and choice you, there is maybe with that. Yeah, that's you what can, I was just going to say. You can make it if you just play. You can make it if you just play nine holes. Yeah. Okay, okay, hey guys, I, I believe you know. I, I I apologize. I think Mark might have his uh, meeting tonight at seven, so we should okay. probably rock and roll. All right. He was just smiling like he was leaving one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that you must have seen the the old golf clubs I had. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Jeremy if if he could donate him. He said no. There's there's certain things that people won't accept as donations. <laughs> yeah, I might have said that you should take them somewhere else. So yeah, <laughs> but it makes you a player, Mark. There's no avoiding it. I haven't played since 1982. <laughs> well, some of us have played a lot, but would say my best game was in '82. <laughs> All right, we have uh, no outsiders for comments. Let's look at uh, the minutes from the last meeting. Presumably everyone has read them and they like them. Entertain a motion for approval. Move to approve. Second. I need a second. I will second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Let's move on. I think I don't I don't have the agenda in front of me. My we'll table, table item one. My Zoom is uh, blocking the agenda. 
So I think I, if I remember the agenda, we're, we're now talking about golf course operations. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So item one was welcome to Brad Davis. We'll, we'll table that one. Um, and so item two, I think everybody received the financials from uh, October, those month of October uh, or through the month of October. And, and obviously things look pretty healthy. November was a, uh, an outstanding month. Um, you know, just for your, for you all, it was, I think we beat last year's November by a hundred grand. Um, so, you know, I don't have expenses through November, um, but it, you know, it's, it's been a nice year. And then we have been open in December and we're going to, you know, open tomorrow, open Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to open. And then from that point, it looks like it might be a closure, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll keep our eyes on the weather and you never know. So you get enough play to to cover the cost of staying open. Well, so here's here's the thing, right? Um, I work anyway, and um, if if I'm here and it's and it's decent out, and my definition of decent would be around forty degrees with no wind, mm -hmm. then I I don't see why we wouldn't open, right? As long as it doesn't do damage to the golf course. Um, that 40 and then we get into 10, 15 mile an hour winds. That's when we'll, we'll just kind of say, all right, it's not worth it. So. So there are enough people that will play 40 and no wind. 40, no wind. Oh, there's a lot of people that would play 40, no wind. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just... Like today, we, today we probably had about 25 rounds, something like that. Yeah. I saw somebody out there early. I thought, wow. Hope there's no frost on the greens. 23 rounds today. Well, the numbers are pretty impressive. I don't know how you did it. You're going to have to hide it, Mark? <laughs> no. What should we do with it? In terms of what? Well, we could uh, double up on uh, on uh, loan payment, for instance. The city might say, "Oh, wow, magic!" What happened? Well, you don't have expenses in there yet, right? So, I think well, the plan. Of November. Yeah, but we have uh, we have expenses for December too, True. and and we're going to have whatever depreciation expense has to roll through there. Um, we have to keep whatever capital spending we didn't do this year. So I'm not sure you have a full full enough picture, but ostensibly what we need to do is just make sure that um, I see. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't continue to build that capital reserve um, until it becomes a problem. Right. So yes, the answer is at some point the city's going to say, "Hey, give me some money." Right. And um, quite honestly, um, it. I'm surprised that it didn't happen for 21. Uh, I'd be less surprised. Uh, I, I actually, I, it would not shock me in the least if they came after us in 22 for money, if there's anything there. And so, uh, you know, at some point next year, we'll probably have to discuss uh, how we might want to structure that. Okay. Having been through this at the university with, uh, reserves for the money-making elements and watching the legislature rip it out. I'm pretty sensitive to getting out in front of it to the extent you can to protect yourself because you can't avoid it. No, I understand that, right? So this is, this is the, um, this was the death knell for the city of Madison courses. And I'm sure that probably the same thing is happening for the university. Right. So uh, I, at this point in time, you know, we have relative agreement from the council. Obviously, it's all subject to change. Every council is subject to change. But the thought is, is that, you know, the, the parameters that we set, we want to build that reserve to get up to a million. We're going to pay back 400 grand a year uh, for the, the city owned debt until it's paid off, which is 28 or 29. Right. You know, if we want to, so the part of the problem that the city has, it's not the cash, it's income, 
Right. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we can't, uh, unless we can figure out a way to, to structure it so that it's income, it doesn't do the city any good to pull money out of the golf course. I mean, that's really where we are, right? Because, you know, um, that's the hole, right? It doesn't do it doesn't do the city any good to spend reserves. It's it's fun balance. What they want to do is be able to spend uh, income for the year, which structurally we can't do unless we do something really funky. So that's that's kind of where things are, right? So that, that's a different discussion as if as, as if we want to pay off one of those. Uh, debt elements quicker right but you know i i don't see the need to do that until we have our the, the million bucks left or until the, we get to that billion bucks okay but let's keep an eye on it i have more from your side than ours so um and we, hey, tom if i can interject i you know i did i have talked to bill about that on a few times in the last year or two and he's very good, very comfortable with that 400 grand a year as of right now. So, well, let me just say that we're, we're good for, for 2021. I understand. No, I understand. Uh, um, I understand, Mark, where you're coming from. And also, the, the other thing is, guys, uh, we're, we're going to meet our 300 grand ish. It's going to be under 300 grand for capital for 20, 2020. Do you have, uh, so that's the thing, right? Do you, it's one thing to say that, well, we need to make sure that we're spending 300 gram, right? So either this year or next year, we have to get up to that. This, this year, we're going to get close. So we bought fence. We're, we're you know, to uh, start doing the fence. Um, we, we ended up buying some, some of the things that we already had for capital plan for this year. I just, I told you guys that I wanted to make sure I waited until I knew what was going to happen with our, with our, financial situation. Um, so, you know, I, to Mark's point, the, the financials that you see right now are not quite what it's going to end up, but it is going to be a banner record year, just so that everybody's aware it, it's, it's going to be a record year. In spite of lower food and beverage income. Yeah. I mean, we are green fees. Uh, we, it was, a, and it was a very busy year. I, and I still, fully believe we made the right decision when it came to food and beverage. I, I know that it, we could have ended up having a better year, but it was the, our way to keep everybody safe and stay out of the papers and all that good stuff. So. Oh, I'm sure you did the best you could, but I, I, you certainly got, or we got, or the club got a, got a hit on that. Um, yeah. Oh, we took a hit on food, rules. We took a hit on food and beverage. We took a hit on, on merchandise, but we, we more than made up for it in, in green fees and card fee revenue and that membership revenue. So um, it was, it was, a, it was a really healthy year for Plaza Me Golfers. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Let's move on. Uh, Pleasant View Road. Yeah. So uh, no major changes other than this. Uh, we, I talked to Gary Huth from uh, the city and uh, Brian from Strand, and we were talking about our gate entrance and, one of the things, if and I don't know if you all can recall or not, but um, we have that cell tower that's obviously right adjacent to our property. Right. Well, when they lowered that apex of Pleasant View Road, that cell tower driveway is no longer to be accessible to uh, Mr. Bakken and company. And so Mr. Bakken is was wondering if he could have access to the the gate and. I don't see that being an issue, um, you know, giving him access. I'll leave that up to this body if, if, if you disagree with that. But what, what I wanted was we need to upgrade our gate, right, to like a code situation or a or key fob or something like that, and which sounds like that would be paid for by uh, Pleasant View Road, not, not Pleasant View Golf Course, okay? Um, then besides the gate, and I, I'm still adamant that we need the gate down there. I, 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 it's the number one way we can keep securing our facility, right? Um, then the, uh, the landscaping and the brickwork and the sign, 
we're going to need to replace that because that's going to be taken down, right, due to the widening. Uh, they would cover the costs of that, but if we wanted to do anything above and beyond, if we wanted to improve our entrance, that would be on, our, on us. They would cover the cost of what it would minimally take to move that sign and the landscaping. So this is just more of an FYI for you all and, and to let you know that, that Bakken and them would use our driveway or, or the city's driveway um, as a form of an entrance to the cell tower. Is it just the cell tower? Just the cell tower. to go up there and continue to dump fill because our access road is not built for heavy trucks. Nope, just the cell tower. So it's just maintenance at the cell tower. Yep, correct. Yeah, okay. After Somebody they take off the gate. After they take off the top of the hill, where will the entrance will the entrance still be at where it is now? Or is it going to move to what is what will be the top of the hill? No, uh, you mean our driveway? Yeah. A driveway is going to stay there. What well, they're going to widen the road. Yep. You're just going to move the driveway further west? I, the driveway is staying right there. I mean, I, uh, how do I, I mean, so Dennis, they're, they're obviously going to widen the road. So the, the entrance will, the entrance of Pleasant View Golf Course is going to remain the same. Okay. okay. How, how they're going to finagle it from an engineering standpoint, I, I haven't seen those drawings. I've seen concepts, but all I know is that our driveway entrance is going to remain exactly where it is. That's okay. that's my understanding of it. They're going to add some turn lanes, um, or maybe uh, you know a turn lane from from. I I don't want to. I guess I shouldn't say anything because I've only seen concepts. Okay. Anything new, Jeremy, on the course changes and the architect? No, uh, so you know, we submitted the approval for Kevin Norby to start working, and uh, I have not heard anything from him just yet. So, maybe well, Mark, uh, Mark's pulling up something. It looks like. I don't know, can yeah, you guys see that? The, uh... So this there's the cell. There's the cell tower right here. Right. Here's the entrance down here. That's not going to change. I think all their Bakken just wants, since this is going to close, this is his entrance right here. Yeah. He's going to want to go up the driveway to a cell tower. Right. Is that right, Jeremy? That's correct. Yep. Oh, and his heavy trucks are coming in from the north because they're obviously getting there already. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, they have an entrance. And I don't know if that entrance is being altered. I, I, I can't speak for that, but they have an entrance right there. Yeah. 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 yeah that the, the, tr the truck traffic is, has been an engineering issue for them and they're having to redesign the entire roadway uh, to support those heavy trucks. Cause I don't believe he goes southbound on the on Pleasant View, I think he's he's all going out to four. All his trucks are going out to fourteen because the because going the other way is not really good for the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they do go both ways, Mark. In fact, there's been uh, extended traffic that way just recently because of construction further south off of P View uh, by Hawks Landing. But in any event, it, it, uh, it, it's not something, I guess, that we need to worry about. Okay, any questions on, from anyone? Practice range, this is interesting, Jeremy. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's a number, okay, number of different uh, um, things that I sent you all, right? So. First off, I, I sent you that century fence netting quote just to give you an idea that, that what it would cost to fence to net off our practice facility, right? Um, you know, we it, it's becoming a safety issue on number three lake. Um, more and more golf balls are, are, are being hit on that green. Um, and 
when we have the driving range on the grass, it just, it makes the range shorter. We have a lot of golf balls, especially this year with all the new people that have tried golf um, being hooked onto number one lake. And so what we've tried to do is we try to plant some trees for right now to alleviate one lake to see if we can't, you know, some nice maples. I think some of you may have seen them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and come this spring and summer, you know, it really will look more full and hopefully they'll grab some of those golf balls. But the idea is that potentially we may still need to net that off in the, in the near future, right? In the meantime, um, I, I do believe that we should move towards a mat only range facility um, just from a standpoint of losing golf balls in the gully, uh, having golf balls being hit towards number three lake. Um, you know, there it, it's a 30 yard change if we move the, the tee boxes all the way up, which we have in the past, you know, just to, to rotate the grass sections, right? So we started looking at various quotes and, you know, the one thing that's important to us if we did move to mats only is that we want a, a tee solution where people can use their own tees and set the tee at a specific height because frankly, I'd like my tee to be at a, at a certain height compared to maybe Dennis or compared to maybe Tom or Janet um, or Carl or Mark, if you decide to pick up your 1982 clubs, you know, um, <laughs> you know, your 1982 driver is going to require a different tee height because of the way it's designed. And so it was important to me that we offered people a solution for the tees versus a, just the straight turf of, of, you know, a rolled out turf, you know, um, and so that's why I got three different quotes and I wanted you guys to, to see this, uh, quote, you know, there's, there's a quote that is just a, a rolled version and you stick the T in the mat and it only goes down so far. Then there's another version. So I think that was called, um, grow, uh, grow turf was the rolled version. Then we have fiber, fiber built which they have a T solution that is, if you can visualize the old um, uh, T mats, you know, like the white pods, mm -hmm. but you can stick your T in it and it can go up and down. All right. Um, I give that one maybe a C on, on what I believe is the, it, it's better than, than just being able to stick T in the mat. I think that al allows people to be a little bit more flexible, but it's not quite as good as, uh, turf hound turf hound has a system where if you if you and maybe you guys should do some you know a little bit of research on that but turf hound has a solution where uh it is a, it's a slot and you can literally put your own t in there and you can move it up and down how, however high you like it the downside is of course the turf hound is the most expensive um, the upside is it gives the people, our customers, the most flexibility. Um, before I go on, what do you, so what are your thoughts on Matt only? I mean, thoughts, my off my rocker? I think it's worked out pretty well this year. Obviously, people have not been minding the rule completely. It's a lot of iron hacks out in front of them. If we're going to do something with turf, it's important to me that we get something that works better than anything else because we make a lot of money off that practice range. A lot of money. And I don't want to see that go down because people don't like the mat arrangement. So I'm not opposed to mats, but it's got to be a mat situation that feels like grass Tees like grass because I want to keep making money off that thing. Yep. Jeremy, what are, I mean, most people that I've talked to would rather not have mats. That's but, correct. You know, it's not necessarily an option. So when you hear people other than it's not grass, what are people's biggest complaints about mats? Tees. Whatever those are, Tees. how can we? Tees. No, no doubt about it. Okay. 
Um, and to, to be honest, so here, more and more high-end golf clubs are moving to mats. Okay. Mats have become so much better. I, I know that people, it's going to be a culture change. And that's why this is a big discussion. And, and I'm not, I don't know that I'm looking for approval maybe right now, but and maybe, maybe we do. I don't, I don't I'll leave that up to you all, but uh, this is a big discussion. This is a culture change. And, and I'm not comfortable with netting the range because that's now all of a sudden a massive change, right? I mean, we put mats out there. Okay, you know, at least we don't ruin the view. We put nets out there and holy buckets. I mean, we're, right. we're altering the literally the view. And is that something that we're prepared to do? I, I don't think so. At least I'm not. Um, so mats would be the next solution. And, and for me as a golfer, I don't care getting off mats. It's actually easier. Um, I don't have to worry about divots. I can stay in the same spot. It's way easier. Um, people's perception of mats. Um, oh, I can't feel it. I can't, I hear them. I understand. Uh, but geez, tour pros hit off mats. So, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 th I think the mats are just getting better in quality. And I think people were, are going to have to adapt. It's going to be our policy. Not that we're a high-end golf course, but what kind of mats are high-end golf courses putting in? Like Fiberbuilt. For example, Fiberbuilt, 60 of the top 100 golf courses, or not Fiberbuilt, 60 of the top 100 golf courses have turf pound. Okay. See, and I think that that in itself is a selling point, at least for your staff to be able to come back and support why we did it versus all the safety issues. But, you know, I think that that's a, a, a big reason. If we were gonna do anything other than mats, I've been asking that we go to a sand uh, hitting area there forever. And that's gonna be not cheap either and a constant maintenance headache. So I, I think that makes sense. Could we, is it possible to experiment, lay the right mats down half of the range, down toward the uh, uh, training area and leave the other end the way it is? See what happens? Mats only. So, I, 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 I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's going to be hard. So a cu couple things. Okay. So Mark again, pulled up a, a well done Mark. Um, so <laughs> if, if you've got people hitting down on mats and you've got other people 20, 30 yards ahead, now it becomes a safety concern, right? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. You misunderstood. So the South end of the mats of the range goes to the new mats. The north end stays the same as it is now. The whole range is mats only. So you could introduce the new mats and get people to like them. Uh, what? So, 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 so Tom, they will like these new mats more than they like our current mats. Well then do the whole thing right. That, that's right. I mean, no offense, but I, I don't know why we would do that. Well, you're talking about a culture change. Yeah, so culture change would be we're changing next year. We are. This is it. And, no, and that's, that's a radical change. <laughs> I understand. Which you you need you need. It is, but it isn't because we were mats only this year, right? So why nobody's going to notice if it's a radical change because we already were mats only. What they're going to notice is we have better mats and it looks much better than our current solution for them. Jeremy, right? I'm for the new mats on the entire range, mats only. So now, do you guys agree with, so turf hound and having it not individual stations, but it would be all inclusive, right? So if you look at that competition mm -hmm. versus turf hound, I'm proposing that we make it like that as opposed to individual mats. And then there's a concrete with our barrier and then another mat, concrete barrier. I'm proposing they would be installed like it would be looking on the left-hand side of that turf hound there. Yeah. So that and 
so those would be the stalls then, Jeremy, and those mats can be can be picked up and cleaned and moved. That's the they were individual. Great, great question. Uh, yes, we can rotate those mats as opposed to a continuous strip of carpet. We can't right. rotate the mats. Yeah, which is what is which is um, what we're seeing here is the comparison between the two. So Th yeah. that's correct. We're looking, you know, and, and the other thing is, by the way, with um, with turf hound, that quote includes installation. They install it with fiber built. We have to install it. How are we going to keep people from going out in front of the mat and great, hacking up the turf? Great question. Uh, that's the solution that we're looking at currently. Uh, we would, in summary, what we're looking at is we would we would tear up that spot, Tom. You know, let's call it I don't know a yard, two yards, or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Right. And then we would put maybe a stone or pebbles and and kind of uh, uh, glue it essentially, right? Okay. And then what we're also thinking then is let the grass grow and not have it fairway height. Got it. But you're still going to have to pick it, so it can't be. You're, you're correct. So it can't be too high, but. We, and we mow the range. Oh, no, I know you do. Okay. But you say let the grass grow, but you yeah. can't let it go to fescue height. No, I apologize. Too too uh, uh, rough height. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, are there people going to be hitting out of it? Of course. You know, uh, we're never going to stop that. Well, you could if you put pavement down all the way to the drop off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There'd be a lot more scarred up balls from all the uh, the hits that don't even make it past the. Hey, hey, Mark, can you can you do me a favor? Can you go to um, Turf Hound? Dot com. Those Turf Hound mats are square. Correct. Yeah, uh, yeah, correct. But it would be so, a T. It would be so a. They can be rotated uh, ninety degrees or one hundred and eighty degrees. Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Yep, what kind of what Carl was alluding to. Um, and then at the bottom, you see, use any T, any length T, and uh, the the inter just up right there. Click more. Okay, on the right. So uh, actually, both of those. That's. That's what I want. So on the left hand side, use any T at any height with turf hound. And so, so there's are there, are there four of those slats per square? I can't recall. There's there's multiple, Tom. I can't recall if it's two or four. Yeah, okay. Because that has a big impact on being able to rotate it. Correct. Obviously. But that 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 little slot there, that's yeah. what I want. I like it. Yeah, same here. I like it a lot. And then it'll give it'll give us the ability to tee it up with any height, <laughs> you know. Have you hit off these mats? I personally uh, have um, at Blackhawk Country Club. They have them. Nakoma <laughs> has them. I've talked to some members, and uh, and I talked to the gen GM over at Blackhawk, and they both come highly recommended. What was I don't remember the cost on the other one. It was like nineteen. The 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 so there was three costs. The the continuous T strip was nineteen thousand dollars. Okay, that's that's on the right hand side. That's what we would get, right? Yeah, right. Um, then then fiber built the one that we would install ourselves. That was roughly thirty one thousand dollars. Plus install. Plus, it, plus our install, like yeah, us, wow. yeah. And then Turf Hound, I think, was 42 or 43. Well, that's, am I looking at the wrong one here? This so, is 22. Yeah, so, I'm looking at 21, no, 22, 23. Yep. So, so guys, uh, so that's one. So remember, Tom, how you were talking about south versus north strip? Oh. Yep. 
that's yeah. let's call that the south one and then there's the north one okay all right so that's just half the range that's correct and then and then i had them quote me up a what if we just indi did individual mats and that would be less i i just think that if we're going to make a change let's make a change i agree now now Tom, or uh, mark can you do me a favor can you go to google and just type in turf hound range And that's fine. And then go to images up, up, up top. And so, you know, click one that looks good to you guys, right? You know, like this is what I'm envisioning. Yeah. You know, and we can make this however we wanted to. And then uh, Mark, if you wanted to, you know, look at another image, but that's, that's what I'm envisioning and no more dividers you know, it, it would be that. Yeah. Yep. I remember playing off something like this down in Florida. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Can you can you click that one right to your left? Uh, go down now. What do they do in front there? It looks like. Oh shoot! It took us to. Like that top photo on the right there looked like they did something up in the front. No, I'm sorry. Go go back to that to that photo you were at, and then go to the right, and then no, go back. What are you asking me to do? So hey, go 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 Jeremy, to the right. Jeremy, and, and there's then, your solution for there, the right there. Now go up. This up here. Yeah, click that picture. What is that in front there? Oh, I dirt. think that's, yeah, it looks like just dirt. Right, is now, that just dirt? dirt? But we would do something similar to, to that, right? And and then uh, we, we, we haven't, and it looks like there's four slots. You see that, uh, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what okay, you can do. Left, right. You can make that a rain garden. People would love it. <laughs> <laughs> just so that they aren't too high. That's actually not a terrible idea. I mean, yeah, just so, just if it wasn't like Carl said too high, you know. Right. <laughs> huh. Can you scroll down a little bit, Mark? C click that photo. Is that is that just dirt? Okay, that yeah, might just the, the same, same thing, just from the other angle. Other angle. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but but Jeremy. Yeah. Mark, scroll down to that one you were just looking at. There's your solution for lost golf balls. Put a chain link fence right in front of the mats. Oh. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They never go down range. <laughs> exactly. Good one, Tom. <laughs> so what do you what do you all think? Thoughts? Um, I was asking before, these are squares, so you could rotate them 90 degrees. Well, the slots are only on the left and the right, so that can't happen. So you've they, got a couple of years of, of Right, you can. The only thing you do is 180 degrees. Right. They do. They could be rotated 180 because right. most golfers are right-handed, so the left slots aren't going to be used as much as the right ones. Um, and and each pad could be replaced individually. Correct. That that is correct. Right. What are they quoting for durability, Jeremy? Uh, incredibly durable. So they say. So first off, two-year warranty, okay, for turf hound, one year for the other one, all right? And they think that with our volume, we're looking at five years at a minimum to get out of these things. Hmm. Five to 10 years is what he said. He's like, I, it's hard for me to say how many strikes because I don't know how many strikes you guys do, right? He said, if you rotate the mats and if you've got, if on the south end, it doesn't get hit as much as the north end. Right, then right. you guys have to do your job of rotating the mats out, just like rotating tires. He's like, right. if you do that, you're going to get five plus years easy out of these things. Carl, what do you think? It, it addresses a lot of things we've talked about over the last few months. I mean, we're able to, 
lose less golf balls. We're able to address the teeing issue, which I agree, Jeremy, is the biggest issue that we seem to have is people, when, when they tee up, they either go in front of the mats right now or they try to stick it into the mat as it is. And this helps to address that issue for sure. And we talked about having a, a really good type of mat like this versus having grass. And I think, I think this really gets to the high quality mat that we were talking about a possibility. And I think this is it. Janet? I say the same thing. If we're going, let's go quality. Yeah. Because you can't back you can't back up the truck and then say, oh, these are going to be better because they're going to make their minds up the first time they're in there. So absolutely. Dennis? And they they can't, you know, they run to any of the private clubs and they're going to see the same thing. So we're staying that high-end golf course that we are. <laughs> Dennis, what do you think? With a low end price. Value. Value. That's right. What do you Mark, think, Tom? I think we should do it. And I think we should do it all the way. What the hell is this? And I think we should do it soon. Jeremy, can we get those in like before major rounds start next year? So it's just there. So you're not disrupting it, you know, like in June or something. That yeah, that would be the goal, April, Janet. May. Yeah, that would like I would we would love to have it installed in, in April. Okay. Mark, I have a question for you. The city is uh, struggling with budget and it'll probably be even worse a year from now. And we're going to spend $45,000 on the golf range. How's that going to be received? At, at this point, I think we've successfully compartmentalized the golf course, right? They're not going to object to spending to secure the revenue stream. But I think yeah. we've, we've, <laughs> we've succeeded in, in saying that, you know, the golf course needs, the golf course needs investment every year. That's, that's my opinion of it, right? There's just certain things, right? If you, if you look at the problems with Madison, you know, if you could distill it, uh, take out the water issues at, at uh, Yahara, take out any of the other issues. The biggest thing is that they have not invested back in the golf course over the last 15 years, right? Where, whereas we've only been reinvesting for like, what, the last seven, eight years, Jeremy? Yeah, something like that since maybe 2014 or 15. Right. And, and think about where things were 2013, 2014 versus where they are now. Right, we that essentially, you know, we've we've put two point one million dollars back into the place over those these seven years, and I think it shows. So I'm not I'm not worried at this point that spending revenue from the golf course on the golf course is problematic. What would be problematic? is if we were having to spend money from the general fund, right? Then people might have a, a, a position to, to bitch from, right? but we're not. It's, it, this is all user fees. There's no tax support here. It's all done. It's, this is all a result of the residual from player fees. I know that's the argument, but I worry about, I have always worried about how it's perceived. So if, if, you're, if you're convinced that we have sufficiently compartmentalized what's going on at the golf course from what's going on otherwise, I have not heard for a long time that the city is spending a lot too much money at the golf course. Haven't, haven't heard that argument but I don't want to begin to hear it. 
Well, I think if you ever do hear it, we need to do a better job of communicating that it is self-sufficient, right? right? Um, you know, uh, we've got, what, eight years left. At, so it's at 2.4, 2. No, it's got to be more than that. Nine years left. Yeah. 3.2, 3.6. I'm trying to remember what's left. Jeremy, do you know what's left in terms of capital or of debt? Uh, yeah. Give me a sec. Twenty thirty is our last payment. Okay. So we have Nine ten years. years. So basically there's three million bucks. Right. Uh, four million bucks, right? 400 grand a year. 400 a year right. So there's 4 million bucks left. Um, you know, which goes back to your discussion at the beginning is that if you know, if you if we wanted to say, hey, you know, we're ahead of schedule, and we're going to pay down something earlier, we can do that too. Um, I, I think it's, you know, I think the city at this point is happy with the 400 grand a year. I think it'll be a shock to them that it, it did not suffer this year. My concern is more 22, 23 when they start that construction. Yeah. Plus, if you rode, that's going to hurt. That, that, that's a really, that's a really good point. Um, you know, and, and I think that could be an argument, Mark, going forward. Is we we don't know how it's going to affect our business in 2022, 2023. You know. And, and, and beyond. And then frankly, you got tumble down or not tumble down, but they, they're starting up a par three, par four course that's going to open in 2021, late fall. Um, you know, so I, I think, yeah, things are good right now, but let's just, let's just see how things pan out with Pleasant View Road. Cause that could, could be detrimental. We don't, we don't know just yet. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's one reason not to pay back earlier. Um, to give us to keep that cushion within the golf course, um, within the fund. I mean, uh, right. but in any case, I, I think we're fine. You know. Hey, Mark. At the end of this year, so we will be just under three point three. Then that's not right. Last last payment is uh, we are paying ninety three thousand dollars scheduled in twenty thirty. That's the last payment. Yeah, something's not right there, right? The there's, 10, there's 10 the years of, well, look at it this way. It's nine, it's 3.6, 3.7. The beginning of this year. Yep. And 3.3 .3 beginning of next year. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, you know, Jeremy, so what, do you want us, what do you, what do you want from us, Jeremy? Well, I mean, if you if you all agree with my thinking, and 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 frankly, guys, you know, if this is a bust and we and we have a backlash uh, from people, right? Then what we can do is we can start rotating. We can sit there and say, okay, on on every other day we're going to be mats only, and we've provided them with a, a nice solution for mats. And then the other opposite day, we can move back to grass, right? Um, the main reason why we moved back to mats only this year was the fact to keep people six feet apart from another. That was our way of, of following the guidelines. Uh, it just, it worked incredibly effective to keep, we, to keep the golf balls under the gully. It was remarkable how many golf balls we saved by moving the, the mats back. Um, so, you know, look, I'm not saying this is the end all be all, but what I am saying is I, I believe we should move forward with this. How many complaints did you get, you know, in general throughout the year that you never went back to grass? None that I'm aware of. <laughs> now, maybe some squabbles, but I get squabbles because it was 70 degrees and 10 mile an hour winds instead of five. So, right. um, you know, Dennis, I, we did fine without being on the grass. But if, if, if the customers demand something different, then we adapt to it, right? I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not opposed to that. I just, I would like to, like I said earlier, I would like to change the culture and, 
and and by giving them the best product that we can at least give them is the way to do it. And it, that's what I would want from my golf course if I was a member or or a or a resident. Um, that's what I would want. So what I'm looking for you all is to, and if you're not comfortable moving forward with this just yet, then that's fine. Otherwise, move approval for a recommendation to finance. Is this part of the capital budget for this year or is this? Capital for 2021. So we would not buy until 2021. I'll, I would take this to finance and common council maybe in January. Okay. All right. I'm prepared to listen to a motion. Get those ears teared up, teed up. Somebody I, go. I I will move that we uh, that we go ahead with turf hound uh, at the full uh, the full range. I'll second it. Individual mats, not the continuous turf. Correct. Uh, individual mats with the rough outline, right? So correct. Uh, okay. And Janet, you second. Yes. Questions, comments? Just just to confirm, Jeremy, the total on that would be something in the range of 42, was it? That's accurate. Um, uh, if you if you all would like, I can get you the exact. Give me a second. I think it's in the it's it's in the quotes. I just wanted to make sure. It is in the quotes, but yes, you're you're correct, Carl. Um so it's looks like 26 and 23. So it's uh, no, no, that's no. not correct. Okay. Twenty-six. It's at the twenty. Okay, forty-four two eight four thirty-two. Got it. That twenty. That twenty-six that you saw, Mark. Um, that was for 40 individual mats from that. All right. All right. So the total is 40. 44, 284, 32, which falls within our budget, capital budget. So, so you, we're going to end up with the same number of, of hitting stations as we have now? We're going to end up with 38 hitting stations. And what do we have now? Uh, roughly 40, rough, you know. We're not going to lose anything. So yeah. about the same. Okay. That's correct. So this is a motion to move forward with a commitment to purchase. Correct? That's correct. Correct. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, five zero. Great. I think we so have our ongoing capital reserve discussion. Yeah, I mean, that's a big one, right? That range was a big, a big one. Uh, you, I just put that on there because it was, you know, you all want to keep talking about maintenance and, and then um, the, f the fencing and, and the ski, right? Oh, yeah. speaking of which, I should have put this on there. Um, Too late. So, yeah, maybe I'll put, oh, shoot. What, oh, hold on, golf operations. You ready for this one? All right. Okay. Um, the city parks department is is no longer managing the cross country ski trails when it comes to grooming and things like that. Um, CXC is going to do all the um, the grooming. And the good news is is the Erdman property. You know, it sounds like things are moving forward and. Uh, Yuri and company are, are going to, they're going to have the trailhead at Pleasant View Golf Course this year, but sounds like next year, the trailhead, including the bikes will be at Erdman property. Um, so that, that is good news. Awesome. Definitely. Now, yeah. The thing of it is, is that to, to Mark's point, he's always talked about this is that there's going to be a lot of people, pedestrians that are going to be coming out to use that, that land because it is beautiful land. And, and if Mark, if you scroll a little bit more, keep going left and then right about there. Okay. So right 
uh, okay, by, by the fairway bunker of nine. You all see that one, right? Mm -hmm. That's where the facility is going, ish, I believe. Well, so here's, it's going to be right in here. It's yep. going to be right in here. Yep. Oh, right at the fairway bunker. Yep, exactly. Fairway. So right, at, right in here is where, the, where there's going to be a parking lot in their buildings. So we need to make sure that we secure the facility right there because it's honestly a stone's throw away from our fairway. Yeah. Right. How will they get there, Jeremy? Uh, access through Schwartz Road. So okay. there's, there's two things, right? Have they talked about taking this road through here again, or, the, or is it just going to be the trail? I didn't anything about that, Mark. I was curious I think that's, about that, too. I think that's done, from my understanding. So th they're not even going to extend the bike trail this way? No, the, the, the walking path is going to go there. But no car, no vehicle access? To my knowledge, no vehicle access. Okay. I thought the whole intent was emergency vehicles. I... I I, I don't I think don't so. I, I think, you know, what they've been trying to do is get this road. Right. Right. So this is this road is owned by the cap by the town. And then um, whether Yuri or the city or somebody is going to build the road up to his where his um, yeah. parking lot and, and buildings are going to be pretty long way. Okay. What's that outbuilding off a road just north of where you're at? This one? Yeah. That must be something that belongs to Erdman. Hmm. I know his snow cats are down there. His snow making machines are there. I think that's where oh. they're, they're going to store his, the CXC stuff. Um, so I think, uh, needless to say, but, but this is actually a part of the ongoing capital discussion is that we're, we are going to have to invest in some capital um, along that north end of our property. Without a doubt. Yeah. So that's along uh, woods eight and nine then, right? Woods eight and nine and, and frankly, you know, back towards six. I mean, Carl, I'm fully expecting a lot of people to use this. I mean, it, it is pretty property back there and, and it's, it's going to be a really nice asset to this, to not just the city, but to everybody. And, I do believe that we're going to see a lot of traffic, pedestrian traffic, right? Bike traffic, cross country ski stuff. And, and we just got to always do what's right for us. And, and Yuri knows that, that, that he is a guest at Pleasant View Golf Course. When he's on Pleasant View Golf Course property, he works for Pleasant View Golf Course and not CXC. He understands that. Uh, I'm not worried about the cross country stuff because you're not going to be playing golf in the snow anyway. I think the broader issue is that when this is open in the summertime, that you're going to have bikers and hikers. Oh, we're going to have, I, I, I agree, Mark. I mean, it, bikers, hikers, uh, the hikers, the bikers are going to want to stay on the trail, right? Uh, I'm honestly not overly worried about the bikers. It's the hikers. They like to wander and go see things. And, and without a, a trail system, which hopefully a system is, is established, they don't know where to go. And, and a lot of times we find them where, in areas that they shouldn't be. So, right. um, so that's what we're going to have to do. And that's, that's something that we'll keep investing in 2021, uh, with fencing and signs and things like that. Right. So I could envision, so this, this trail here, right. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to see that and say, Hey, you know, let's go walk that trail. And, and that, that spot where you were just at, that's a hot spot where we're going to fence off. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And Jeremy, we've decided that we have to pay for that still. That's it, yes, minor. it's our property. You know, we're going to have to secure it, right? It, it would be no different if it was something else. If we were putting a fence around your your backyard, it's 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 worth it. Yeah, I I agree. It's worth the headaches for us. Um, I'm just, I'm really thrilled that, that at least the, the trailheads sound like they're going to be finally moved mm -hmm. because there was a massive conflict of interest and, and, um, and this is going to be better. 
better for them, better for us. It's better for everybody. It's, it's, a, it's a win. This is a, the end of a six year fight. Ex exactly. It's been I'm it's, glad it's finally over. And it's funny, as I'm doing this right now, I keep looking out in the parking lot just to make sure nobody parks so that I can leave, <laughs> you know. Um, but th that's what's so silly about it is that I shouldn't have to feel that way, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so anyway, uh, so that's that's an ongoing capital discussion. The other thing is the maintenance facility. You know, that's something that we, we, we can't let go. I don't know if we want to continue this conversation tonight. I'll leave that up to you guys. But um, the maintenance building, the range, and ski were the three items you wanted on there. So let's keep them all on for the next one. Uh, one should be just uh, an update on the uh, purchased, and we'll talk in detail about the others later. Okay, so I'm, I'm good with that because, there, frankly, there's no need for action right now. So, you know, the only thing that I don't want is I don't want that maintenance buried again because you know we may be short money because of the road you know it's a safety issue for those for the people that keep us alive at the golf course you know and you've said that over and over it's just not a safe environment for them there so that's my only concern is that we keep that we keep talking about it so that we do something for them okay i i don't disagree i just i think that the quotes that came back from Strand just kind of made me really nervous. And I don't think we're ready to spend a million dollars to expand the maintenance facility. No, and you know? I think that we could look at other things if you need to. I just want to make sure that Kevin knows we're continuing to make that a priority. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Future agenda items. I just listed a few. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then obviously, you know, the, the same, right? Finance, all that good stuff. Plus yep. road update. Others people want to see? Nope. Looks good. Jeremy, I'm going to have to drop off. Okay. Thanks, Mark. All right. Thank you, Mark. Good guys. Looks good to me, Jeremy. I think we may, or we, I, th I truly believe we're making a right decision all on the range. I really do. I, I, it took me a while to get there, but I'm there. And Janet, I hear you in regards to the, uh, the, the maintenance shed. And actually what I would love to do is I would love to fence that off with some composite fence as well, um, which will, will give our staff a little bit more privacy, right? And, and maybe give the, the, uh, the neighbors across the street um, Hello? a little bit more, uh, whoop, let me mute Tom. Are you good, Tom? Uh, but maybe we'll give our, our neighbors across the street a little bit more piece of, of what they're seeing, so. Well, or even the safety if you wanna be able to, you know, lock it for well, whatever so reason. It's funny you say that. I literally just saw, a, a guy, his daughter, and their big dog walking on the golf course when we had golfers out there. <laughs> and he came right through the maintenance facility. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I thought you were closed. I'm like, doesn't matter if we were closed or open. You, you shouldn't be here. You crossed a fence. You know, he, he hopped our fence with a no trespassing sign right there. And, and that's a good point is, is that we might that's a that's a hot area that people just seem like it's okay to just walk through our maintenance facility. We have thousands of dollars, sometimes more than that, actually, but you know, equipment sitting there, and it it becomes a security issue. And and fuel, we have gas down there and diesel that we right. that, tanks that. I I don't disagree with you. I really don't. Um, it's, I think the maintenance facility we got to we got to continue on it. Yeah. I mean, we're talking, you know, skid steers and, and, and our truck and, I mean, a hundred, like $100,000 worth of equipment just that sometimes sits out there, you know? Not that I want anybody to know what we have sitting out there. But. Well, we'll have to, I, I agree with you, Janet. We need to figure out how to address that. And if we're going to have a, a million over a year, maybe we bite the bullet. 
you know, one thing, and I don't want this to be public, but guys, we're looking at a $3 million year, which is amazing. Amazing. I'm, I'm super proud of my staff. I think they, they are, they have done so well and it's super cool to, to say that we are a $3 million facility. So you've done more than well. Yeah. It, it's, it's just, it's remarkable. So, um, so anyway, yeah, go home now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I look to make sure nobody's parking right. me in. <laughs> as soon as we don't do this, somebody's going to park. Yeah. Right. You, well, you, do we need to do a January or not? I think we should just in case uh, yeah, we I think we should. do capital expenditures. You know what I mean? So um, let's just let's just tentatively schedule one in January. And if we if we, you know, cancel, we cancel. You'll have year end money by the totals by then. Uh, yeah, that would be uh, that would be great. At least unaudited financials, Dennis, that doesn't include depreciation or anything like that. But maybe uh, we would have our, our expenses versus uh, revenues. So what are you looking at? January 11th? 18th. 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 That's Martin Luther King Day. Ooh, okay. Well, we can do the 11th or the 25th, then my vote would be the 25th because the 11th, we would not have financials. Okay. I'm fine with the 25th. Me too. Same here. Six o'clock via Zoom. All righty. Got it. Love it. Okay, I'm listening to someone say adjourn. I move to leave us all and say good night. <laughs> I second the emotion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy. Guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If I don't speak with you all or see you in the next couple of days, um, have a great rest of the year. Happy holidays, all that good stuff. Absolutely. You and your family too. Probably Thanks, see guys. me. I'm playing Wednesday. Yeah, we're packed, sold out. We're sold out Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah, we're eighty percent sold out right now. Oh, hey, uh, I know this is you know we're end, meetings ended, but it doesn't really matter. But there's some really cool stats I want to share with you guys really quick. That we were, so I'm doing a report for the city of Middleton address, and a um, cu couple things uh, that I thought was really really cool. Thing number one, we have grown our our women's ship and sip. All right, and and I should have put this in uh, golf operations because I think this is cool. Uh, from 16 players when we first established it to, in 2017 to over 80 this year. Wow. And that's just, that's just brand new women that are playing golf. And I think that's really cool. Um, uh, you know, kudos to Becky Halverson. Be Becky is running that program. Um, and I, I, I just, I think that's neat. The second neat thing is this. I'll wait for Tom. I gotta call you back. Bye. The second thing is that is this back in 2013 and 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 I'm not uh, you know I'm not I'm not you know blaming anybody here, but we only had one junior pass holder in 2013, 2012 actually 2012 one junior pass holder, and main reason was is the cost of that was over 700 bucks for a junior pass. Okay, we we dropped that rate down to 295 to help to, to try to promote growth for juniors. We had over, we had 98 junior pass holders this year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I think that's super cool story to tell, right? Is that we provided a safe haven for, for families, for, for juniors, for women. I just think it's super neat. And I'm, I'm really proud of my guy, my staff for that, you know? Um, and then uh, the other thing that I think was really cool is last year we had 25% people book online. So 75% booked over the phone or in person this year it completely flipped we had 75 percent of our clientele book online and 25 percent booked in person or over the phone wow so pretty pretty neat to to see how the uh we talk about culture how the transition of online booking has changed so i have one one comment about online booking uh once sure. you once you um book online and Sometimes you want to book a foursome and you don't have four people, but you want to reserve to call your buddies and fill it up. Um, in other words, you don't have the names of all four people. Um, there's no way to add that person. So we're, we're working on fine tuning the system, right? Um, 
Yeah, there, there are some funny things, Dennis, that uh, that occur with online systems, but we're we're trying we're working with our providers as much as we can to to refine it. Stay tuned. Okay. But what's really cool is I just did a test. Now, now, granted, I you know I know the system, know my phone. I, I picked up my phone. I I opened up the app. I had to search the app or uh, tea times or whatever. I booked a reservation. I was not logged in, and I logged in booked a reservation in 23 seconds over my phone oh yeah you can you can do it very quickly um, it is it is remarkable and and i think it's been a really good thing and dennis we're going to continue making it better for you guys great anyway it, but it was more about the numbers there right uh 75 versus 25 and then flip it i think that's really cool Obviously, that's better for you the more online you get, right? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, so online phone calls. I mean, I'm telling you guys, or I mean, uh, uh, over the over the phone uh, phone calls, just phone calls. The average, I, I I forget the market study, but it's like five minutes a call. Yeah, yeah. Right. Think about that, right? So if we had sixty thousand starts, now I know that that's that was last year, sixty thousand starts, and I know that some of them are foursomes, but let's just say. That's 15,000 reservations that were made, right? Okay, times five minutes, you do the math. I mean, it, it, it is the most time-consuming, stressful thing that our staff endures while they're on property, other than uh, disgruntled you know, customers, things like that. This is my reading buddy, guys. I gotta, I gotta leave. Okay, we're so done. She gets, she gets really upset if I don't do what we're I'm done. supposed to do. I, I was just trying to share good news with you hey, all. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.